how many is my deck going to allow me uh, to play here? So getting right into it, it looks like Robert was victorious in the in the alleged die roll. Obviously, Tokugami being on the play, very, very, very strong here. Uh, I think Tokugami outputs his aggression a little faster. I think him going first is probably a little more relevant. Bakugo doesn't mind taking like a turn or two to sculpt that that perfect hand because it's really about having the right ones for Bakugo, right? Having your right yeah. stun grenades, your right things to clear, your right things to chain damage, your right discards. Uh, whereas Tokugami can kind of just find any four or five moves and put a million damage on them. So this is interesting uh, uh, on this matchup uh, specifically. Oh my goodness. I checked the one there. The double front beat down, check coming in on the second foundation, on a three, checking a one. Our character can commit us to two, which does not get us there. Not quite. Yeah, I mean, Mark now uh, uh, essentially going third in, in this matchup now. Correct. With that, with that unfortunate one foundation build. Uh, but I mean, that that is that is the nature of double front beat down, right? Yeah, it, it, it's funny because um, uh, I've got such a, uh, I've got such a, a, a race in both of these uh, these horses. Mm -hmm. um, I am playing Chaos Tokiyami competitively. That's my deck. That's the deck I want to play for set three. If I was right. playing a Nationals today, my list would look incredibly similar to Roberts. But before the tournament, Mark Tyner has to borrow a bunch of cards for his deck. So half the deck of this in this Mark Tyner deck are are me and him's working last night. <laughs> so th this so, is this is your your personal stock right now, right? Mr. Mark Tyner here trying to ride the the wings of Double Front Beatdown Bakugo in 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 into the meta. Yeah, I mean this is exceptionally interesting, right? I mean we haven't seen a character like Bakugo one really be super relevant for a very 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 long time now. Um, especially something like a Double Front Beatdown build. Uh, are, are there things that maybe Maybe set three brought to the table that you think make this so much more relevant? Stun grenade. Stun, stun grenade. Stun grenade. Stun grenade. Stun grenade. That card is so absolutely monstrous. Um, uh, in my testing of Tokoyami, one of the decks that has been absolutely taking me to task has been Stun Grenade Bakugo. Um, Bakugo just like threatens uh, three da uh, 20 damage just so free on turn two. Um, and and like the way that you answer Bakugo is you just like have to eat it on the chin. Very tough versus your your six and five hands as character, but uh, because of the low health that Tokoyami has, um, it is uh it's difficult to just you know wear that. Um, yeah, but, but that with is only a build one from Bakugo, Bakugo, it's going to be very difficult to to to, to threaten that twenty damage and let like kind of let Tokoyami do what he wants to do. Yeah, right. I mean, Mark is super vulnerable right now with one foundation to block with. None of these attacks are really in the realm of blockable. Um, Robert's got a lot of things to capitalize on here. Uh, he's not in the best position he could be. We did see the Dark Shadow Search fail, and then we saw the Petty Squabble play come in to just try and dig for more cards, looking for that Dark Shadow, really trying to deal 28 on this turn before Mark has a chance to build any kind of a stage and actually right. be able to block any of, of Robert's big moves here. Um, so we're definitely looking for our opening here as Robert and and the circumstances are not as great as they could be um, and we're gonna be able to half block this ice storm here co committing our, our one foundation yeah. getting it in good while we can even if this is a poke from Tokoyami right like like getting the momentum to your giant ice walls are are, are super live and say that uh, you skipped your build turn last turn with my giant ice wall stun to the extra stun to it grants and a, a dark shadow ruin you you're not gonna build more than five extra foundations next turn you're going to be in the exact same position next turn, but I'm going to keep building out. Um, and so this is a really, really crucial turn for Robert to really push his advantage, build out as much as you can, man, and then um, uh, see force Bakugo to either put himself into a bad position build-wise, bad position attack-wise. This looks like it's Robert's game to lose, really. Yeah, I mean, Robert has massive control over this uh, this game state right now. Uh, Mark really just has to spend another uh, another turn trying to trying to build here, trying to stabilize some kind of a stage, which is only going to leave him with so many foundations with just one build turn and only so many cards to block with, right? I mean, all of Robert's moves are going to be coming in so big. Um, it's really, really, really uh, important right here for Robert to find more attacks and continue to capitalize on this massive game state advantage that he has from from that one check turn on Mark's end. We had a build four from Mark, which is great. Oh, it means we only have two cards in our hand to defend ourselves with. Um, and the likelihood of, of Mark having only two attacks. After reviewing an attack, that's an interesting play. Reviewing the freezer burn there is super duper interesting. Yeah, uh, I would have just 
I don't know. Kill yeah, I him. think you keep every move in your hand right now um, as as Robert. I mean, we have a ruin alongside it, so like we're we're already leading with a good one. Um, but I mean, freezer burn is is one of the best in the biz. Yeah, it's a four low for four that readies a foundation. So, um, if we can check a a, a little pour and 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 just keep on trucking. Um, and it also uh, cancels moves. So uh, Mark is stuck with the cards that he has, those two latent skills, in order to try and uh, uh, mess with the uh, blocks that he has. Mm -hmm. You flip your latent skill, discard your two cards as cost. I destroy one of my cards with Freezer Burn, I cancel it. Your hand's gone. Yeah, no 25 digging. is easy to count when you mm -hmm. can't block. Yep, no digging for you. Um, like you you built two high blocks, Mark. You better be holding two more, buddy. Correct. These ruins are going to be threatening. Or if you're digging for that low for the freezer burn, I mean, again, low being the still the rare commodity zone of the game, you want to dig right. for it right there. Um, so we're going to be looking for our dark shadow once more and still not finding. Still a whip. Does that tell us that we have too many in our hand or, or what's up? Hard to say. I mean, it looks like we've gone through so much of our deck right now to still not uh, not find our way to the Dark Shadow. It's very, very unlucky for Robert. Really might be Mark's only saving grace here, uh, if if I'm being frank. So the Petty Scrabble play going to come in once more. Just again, digging, digging for those moves, digging for those dark shadows, trying to find our, trying to find our quirk, trying to find our bird here, yeah. so we can actually get things going. It our looks friend. like we, it looks like we may have found it. It looks like we're projecting to play it there. Yep. It dark shadow is finally coming in. Our character's already committed. We don't even have to worry about something like that. Uh, and now the ruins are going to get big. And uh, from here on out, man, it's just a matter of how much Robert can find um, because they're. There truly is just no ceiling on this deck. You know, Togoyami, we've we've really ousted as the the hardcore competitive top dog of the format right now. The 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 standalone best deck at just obliterating you before you get a chance to do a whole lot, and really standing out as the premier way to to just clean your opponent's clock before anything really gets going. And a lot of it's on this uh, the chaos build is is the power of this card that we got pulled up here, Petty Squabble. Um, that bottom enhance is so incredibly powerful in a deck like Tokoyami. Enhance, commit your character, colon. Both players discard two, then redraw two. Um, because of uh, the way that Dark Shadow, uh, or Summoner Shadow is, is worded, it will uh, ready, uh, it, com it commits your character at, at the end of the uh, ability to give plus two to your check. While it's in the card pool, plus one, plus one. Your character is going to get committed anyways. Why not get a lecture value, discard these two foundations, try and draw two more attacks um, in, in, in instead. And with tools uh, like um, Crone Frog Takedown, Sometimes you get the Petty Squabble twice, right? Like the big cost there is you commit your character, Crown Frog says, ready it back up and use the card again. Being able to, you know, have a, uh, a discard two, draw two on a not flip cost, right? We saw we saw latent skill happen on Bakugo's side. We have Petty Squabble face up for the rest of the game, as well as, we haven't even talked about the, the, the crazy part of this card, the response. After your opponent plays an ability on a card, discard a card, uh, commit a named copy of that card in their stage. Insane. Absolutely. I mean, insane. The, the, the fire build has always loved latent skill. The fire build of Tokoyami has always loved latent skill. Petty Squabble in this chaos build is a latent skill every turn, sometimes more than once a turn. Uh, and that's crazy. Absolutely. And, I mean, that's not even taking into account a lot of the other powerful things that you get shifting into the chaos symbol. We're looking at some of them right now. Basic training and easily excited. Uh, I know you have been preaching the power of the zero diffs on the chaos symbol. Yeah huge portion of that power level of this build right here and of course the almighty one with nature one of the most powerful cards in the format um, especially when you're just th you know when you're throwing caution to the wind and just throwing it all away to try and get that kill one with nature is is the way to go and that's just tokoyami's entire game plan in a nutshell right there i want to talk about uh what mark uh did and part of the reason he's playing bakugo today um if you notice we have a double front beat down in our card pool we did. Um, one of the one of the big strengths that Mark uh, was talking to me last night, and the reason he wanted to play this one check, is honestly how good it is versus Tokoyami. Um, if you look, this this ruin has plus uh, eight uh, damage on it because of its own ability. You've got a couple summon dark shadows. You got the one of nature. You got Tokoyami itself. You got the. It's a lot of bonus damage, and all you have to do with the um, double front beatdown is just place it in your card pool and put it back to printed. Right? This is a threatening a uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage move. If we had another double front beatdown, we just place it back down to five. That's essentially partial blocking without a single check involved. Yeah, um, it's extremely powerful. You know, people people tout the, the power of double front beatdown playing it as an attack, right? For that really, really powerful, aggressive uh, enhance. But the ability to just put it into the card pool and reset a card's stats down is oh so strong and is, is almost our saving grace here as, as Mark Tyner in this matchup. 
Um, unfortunately, yes. it looks like Robert's attacks are just going to keep coming down. Um, and and if uh, if we're able to stabilize from here, you know, we're going to be able to find some 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 power. But if Robert has more moves, which it looks like we we do in, in our hand right now, I'm looking at a freezer burn. Uh, things it's gonna be really hard for Mark to make it out of this hurt unscathed. Um, the the aggression and power of Tokoyami just coming in way too strong, way too fast uh, for for this lack of stability that, that Mark was able to find. Well, the issue here really is uh, the one with nature, right? Um, being able to trade out the cards in your hand that you don't even necessarily need to play in order to get plus for your block modifier. Um, all, it's currently a uh, five low for five due to the summon dark shadow. I discard this uh, one card get plus two to the block modifier, respond with the uh, both of the one of natures because they can see each other, right? That puts us up to the lethal range. The only out that we have is another um, double from beatdown, but because of the uh, stronger darkness and Tokoyami, it pushes it right back up to that, that spot. Um, yep. Unblockable attack. Um, Going in, Tokiomi takes game one. Yeah, the one with nature, like you said, coming in clutch there. Mark yeah. showing, hey, after you did that, my math now, this attack is very unblockable. Uh, and then we're going to be moving into a game two. So very unfortunate game for Mark there. Didn't really get to show off a lot of what his deck was truly capable of uh, with, with with the double front beatdowns, uh, because sometimes the, the, the I'm going to borrow some of your terminology here, Tamron, sure. uh, the feast and famine. Of double front beatdown. Uh, sometimes you get the feast, sometimes you get the famine. Right. And unfortunately, Mark caught a lot of the famine there on on his turn to build, stopping him from really finding any leeway. Um, already struggling with Robert winning the die roll. A lot of the odds just kind of stacked against him in 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 that game. I'm eager to see how Mark, uh, one of the most renowned players of this game, correct, is yeah. going to turn the situation around. Yeah, has not had a ton of a uh, a ton of chances to play the game. Um, uh, in the My Hero Academia uh, format, but um, he is our back-to-back -back current Nationals World Champion for uh, the Universes format that we can play um, in top eight for Universes happening this this weekend as well. Um, so yeah, I mean this Mark is Mark is no slob, and even like it. We still took Robert playing every single card in our hand, discarding every single card. There was nothing left in order to um, to, to get it down. And Mark took the one on third one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know. uh, again, even with the odds so stacked against him, Mark Mark is, uh, he's just essentially, he's he's no stranger to, to playing to his outs uh, in, in this game and to our gameplay system itself. Right. You know, he's proved himself time and time again. And I'm eager to see, I'm eager to see him pick up this shovel and slowly dig himself out of the, out of the hole that the odds really put him in in that first game absolutely and absolutely the pressure is definitely on robert now um to to continue his train right not let mark retake the control of this round as a whole um obviously even if mark is able to clinch this one out robert's going to get a game three going first which is a very 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 powerful circumstance for 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 tokoyami as a character True. you know that that is what that deck wants to do that deck going first that deck going second it could, can be a whole other world sometimes absolutely um, absolutely so we'll just have to see uh um what sideboards gets affected here um and how much uh we're allowed to build we have a very dangerous hand i mean it's it's, a, it's another bunch of two diffs and mark totally disagrees he's like hey i can't I can't deal with this, but we have a two two one zero two two one zero coming in beautifully on this second hand for Mark. Question for you: So, if you're in Mark's position, you lost uh, due to the variance of the one check. How do you build here? Do you build two two one zero, or do you go one zero, guarantee that two build? Risk it on a two, or risk it on a four, risk it on a five. There, there's a few different lines you can go. There. If you're asking me, Tamron, how I would take that line, I couldn't even begin to tell you. The idea of putting a one check in my deck absolutely <laughs> petrifies me. I am the the babiest of little baby divas around. Uh, very, very, very scary prospect. Uh, I've played a deck with two checks once. Absolutely detested it, and I don't know if I could ever go back. So the idea of putting a one in there scares me even more. So we're, we are going to see the, the the respect there from Mark there, um, putting it putting it on a one on a one, and unfortunately, the third check being the one that comes in not so hot, only leading to a build two, which to be fair, still more than we built last time, and we're going first. So we have a lot more leeway here Correct. to to navigate out of this position. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot going on uh, that Mark gets to. Uh markets to deal with um with even just this rebuild uh one of the cards that we see down in mark stage is a uh, press conference um uh and press conference is one of those cards that at the beginning of the format i was very down on i did not like press really? conference at all yeah really yeah, yeah, yeah. okay um 
uh, made a couple videos and was like, no, this card is not that great. Played with it, honestly, played against it. And somebody flashed me a card that I just didn't have an answer to. It, it didn't matter, matter that they flashed it to me and it was cheaper for them to play. Uh, yeah, absolutely incredible, especially with Bakugo's power of clearing out his, his card pool. Um, got a couple burst speeds coming down. Uh, oh, oh, on a, a three, a, check a one. A, we built him on the five. No breaks, no breaks on the train. We keep easy, going, easy. we keep going. Um, yeah, something that Sam and I spoke a lot about round one, looking at decks like Water Oswe and Earth Kirishima 2, and looking at the decks that have been good in the past of our game so far. I mean, it's all about how many cards can you play, right? How much value can you get out of your foundations? Because the best decks in our game so far have always been the ones that can negate progressive difficulty, cheat things in and out of the card pool, and re-ready their entire stage over and over again to just play their entire hands out that's always been the big outlier of what's so strong in our game um and for a long time a lot of symbols just haven't had the ability to do anything like that and now press conference offering progressive difficulty cheating to the earth evil and fire symbols even at like a very minimal value flipping to to remove one difficulty essentially is not like the most insane exchange in the world but providing that exchange even at such a base level to symbols like Earth, Evil, and Fire, who always wanted to be very aggressive and never had the tools to cheat things like that before, is I think still something to write home about. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And Bakugo only adds to it, right? The more you interact with him, the uh, the the worse it is for you. The bigger he gets to string. Um, man, you know what the scariest part about Tokiyami is? What's Leading that? off with Crow and Frog. I don't yeah. know if Bakugo's dead here. Yeah, no, this it's, could be it's a poke. petrifying. This could be the first of seven attacks, and I, I genuinely have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's it's so scary, right? Because you know, it's 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 a lot like the um, it's it's a lot like the the original Oswe decks where it's like, okay, do I just have to take everything until the frog lashings come in, until the big damage moves come in? Right. Uh, can I give him that free damage? Can I afford to do that? Um, except now with a lot of his new support, um, you hardly even have the decision tree sometimes against Tokoyami, uh, because every move just gets so big. Absolutely. That has Absolutely. been the the universal constant of the Tokoyami decks ever since we saw um, ever since we saw him rise to a lot of power in some of the early days of set one, and then really solidify himself as such a meta top dog in the set two days with beautiful pilots like Tim Keefe behind him. Uh, the real value of the deck was I have all these attacks. None of them have very relevant text on them, but I'm going to put a speed and 8,000 damage on every move to where it just doesn't matter. Right. You know, they were all just kind of vessels for damage. Crow and Frog being one of the best vessels for damage because it just doesn't count. Uh, but now Correct. we live in a world where after Heroes Clash's card pool has brought so much Tokoyami's power, all of his attacks have very relevant text on them, and we're still putting one speed and 8,000 damage on every single move. Man. So when it comes to deciding what to block and what not to deal with anymore, it can be really hard to figure that out. And making those really, really cutthroat decisions can be what makes or breaks the matchup, but at the end of the day, it'll never feel fantastic, right? You're kind of making the decision of, okay, do I take this nine damage move because maybe there's a 13 damage move back down the line? You know, it doesn't feel good either way, and it's a really, really hard spot to be in uh, when it comes to trying to deal with this deck. It, it can oftentimes feel like there's no correct decision to make. This is a seven high for 11 poke that we've put absolutely no- Zero resources yeah. committed to this. We still have six cards in our hand. Um, a forcing surrender, kicking the 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 um, dark sh uh, summon dark shadow out. Um, but like w once again, I don't know what this means. This is so non-committal. Yep. And I mean, uh, if one crow and frog didn't tell you what's going on, the second definitely won't either. Correct. Uh, because no matter what is in the rest of your hand, no matter what you plan on doing for the rest of the turn, zero reason not to jam both of these moves onto the board. Absolutely. Even when you're checking bad on them, we are going to ready one of the things, right? Um, obviously, we don't even have to ready anything on this one simply because we got our Dark Shadow plus three, not in the card pool anymore, but our plus three does remain. Correct. We're going to ready our character back up once we're done putting damage on if we're done going in. Yeah, that would be the get dead giveaway that I'm, I'm quote, done attacking, right? right? Um, which I'm sure Bakugo has got a big sigh of relief. Oh, for sure, right? So, actually being able to block this one, uh, very fortunate for us. Uh, so now... Is there 17 more? Because I'm not sure if anything is super blockable anymore for, for, for Mark's side of the board. 
We've got what three and cards we, in hand still. We've got an ice. We've got an ice fall and an ice storm in Robert's hand right now. But at the end of the day, we've got double one with nature on board and a bunch of other cards in our hands. So like, if we want our attack to be unblockable, it's 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 gonna be unblockable. If we spend everything, we got 15 damage. So it's not it's not quite enough to get there. Um, but the breaker is gonna come in handy. I think not building after this. I don't think it's necessarily a mistake. Mm -hmm. But um. Mark builds out one more turn, the game's over, right? We've stabilized so much that we can survive through pretty much everything. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with 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 the smaller side of the Robert stage, I'm very inclined to agree with you there. Um, so now, after everything that's been going on, we're getting to see the the power of Mark's deck finally coming in, and finally getting to jam a double front beat down onto the board, uh, using our hands to discard cards and build any foundations among them. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, once more, finding two attacks there, uh, getting very very little value out of this insane one check that we've risked putting into our deck and accepted all of the punishments, overcome the trials and tribulations for to finally get in our aggressive card pool here and not finding value out of that is very, very unfortunate uh, for, for Mark's end here. Robert getting a very, very clean block on this guy off, even through a bad check, and then now putting the breaker in, meaning even though it's gonna clear from Bakugo's responses, we're still gonna have to deal with a little a little bit of minus to our check uh, going into going into here. Correct, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very not unfortunate. Not a bad position for, for Mark at all. Um, the real question is, is do we have more gas, right? Um, so we played a four diff. We checked the four because of how breaker works. Fantastic. After you block with it, your next uh, your opponent's next check to play a card gets minus one. That does affect the blue number in the bottom right corner of the card. Um, we've got ignited arrow coming through. Igniting arrow is a four damage move. Baku gets to take in and make it six with an extra burn two if we want. And this card has the cool ability of if it is blocked, you get to go and find yourself a um, an attack. Yeah, 100%. I don't know if we're allowed to block this uh, as as Robert here. Um, blocking it, uh, letting Mark go and find another attack, potentially a double front beatdown. If we find that, it's insane levels of value. Um, flipping the press conference to reveal the touch of decay. Now that puts us in a very interesting spot now, right? Because as, as Robert now, we, we have two decision trees we can make. Uh, we can eat this move, not let uh, Mark find a move, not let Mark clear from his card pool. But if we block it and let Mark find a move and clear from his card pool, that also means if the Judge of Decay comes down as the next move, it's not going to be able to combo. Correct. Now I don't know how relevant that is if we also don't plan on blocking that one. But it does provide a thought process for Robert to consider there. And it looks like we opted to just go the route of taking it, letting the Touch of Decay come in with the combo as well. Just not caring about it, not not worrying about it. Um, because th this is honestly, even at six damage, still a it's still a very takeable move for us as Robert. Uh, and then we're daring Mark to be able to play a third move right here on on pretty minimal foundations. We've seen how it's our impact. We've right? seen it. How it's our impact is a four difficulty because we've destroyed a foundation. Essentially six low for eight. Um, this is in our lethal spot. And is it worth? Letting him clear the card, or if we don't block this, he'll get to draw a bonus one, right? Um, it is. Um, it is ultimately a matter of if Robert thinks he already has that next attack or not. Which, with our knowledge, we can see that Mark does not have that next attack. Right. So we're super reliant on the touch of decay draw. Unfortunately, not getting us there though. Um, and we've we've ripped apart a reasonable amount of our stage and put some attacks in our card pool to make building a little more difficult after this. And the one check coming in on the end there, committing the th the yeah, committing the two foundations for it. Unfortunate. Going into Robert's turn now, uh, we lost a lot of our stage there. We got very very good damage in, but not not enough to close out the game. We have a particularly weak stage going in. Uh, th th this is this is this is not a not a great spot for, for for Mark to be in. Opting to go and build in another one in the end there. The the force and surrender, very relevant card against Tokoyami. True. We definitely want to try and jam that one as much as we can. Yeah, his thought process there was is the uh, kicking the plus one plus one for the rest of the turn worth holding the two low block. Right. right? And when we're staring at two one with natures on our opponent's board uh, and us having three foundations, yeah. we are not blocking two attacks. Correct. We might not get to block one attack for all we know. That's so there's just true. no sense in holding two cards in our hand unless we're simply just trying to cover more zones. Uh, but if we're holding any block, I have to assume we're holding one singular high block for a massive Dark Shadow Ruin and we're going to just w not worry about blocking any of the low attacks. Makes sense to me. Yeah. We'll see how uh, 
how Tokoyami responds. Even even with the hands that felt as dealt that fate has dealt him here, uh, Mark Mark doing his best to try and play out of the situation, uh, and it really just depends how Robert can can find a string of attacks that can that can finish this round, this game and this round off for for good. Twisted right. Azure Inferno, not a bad one. Uh, yeah. we've, we've definitely spoken a lot about Twisting Azure Inferno um, um, amongst individually, both of us amongst our own channels right. uh, and our own playgroups as well, I'm sure. Easily one of the most powerful cards in Heroes Clash. Yeah, this is uh, essentially bonus copies of Crow and Frog Takedown. But as opposed to Crow and Frog Takedown's ability of letting you re-ready cards, this one essentially says that all your moves get an additional plus one speed. Right. If you want to do the math a little backwards, it says that um, if its damage is three or greater, um, which easily can be due to the, the response it has of after you play an action, it gets uh, an additional plus two damage. Um, my checks being Tokiyama gets plus one, and your rival's checks get minus one. So Baka goes all essentially all Bakugo's moves are just way slower. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an extremely potent card. Obviously, in Tokoyami, the real draw of it is it's it's conditionless, right? Like you said, getting seven damage is effortless. We play Dark Shadow. There's our plus three damage. Uh, it is real, real, real in and out right there. Um, and I mean, getting that getting that effect unconditionally for free is obviously very, very powerful. And a deck like Togoyami, the power level only rises higher and higher. All of our big stats are on things. Plus one speed to all your moves is really relevant. When there's a summon Dark Shadow putting plus one speed, plus one damage in all of them. Uh, obviously, the damage is where Togoyami stacks, right? The damage is 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 completely uh, limitless. Once we get our strongers in Dark and all of our jazz going on the moves get big unconditionally it's but it's the speed right it's the speed that is what gets those 10 damage moves jammed in there over and over and over again and i think that's probably where the real allure of twisting azure comes in um as as like you said four more copies of crow and frog take down in our deck that also pump the speed of all of our moves and the other thing here is like once again it's just so non-committal. We've played the Twisting Azure Inferno out of our hand. We searched for that action that got discarded out of it. So, hey, man, this is a 7 mid for 11 that you might as well check. And I've got plus 4 to my next. My next card is unfailable. Unfailable. So, for like, free. All for free. We've tied the game up, and, I, and I, haven't, I haven't committed to an aggressive turn or a defensive turn yet. I'm still here just figuring it out. Yeah, and there's the crow and frog coming in uh, on a six. <laughs> we've checked a seven. Checked a seven. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've checked a seven. Literally, I didn't know they no, made no checked that bard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no holds barred. Uh, and, and now, I mean, we've got we've got essentially now we're we're gonna be two attacks in, all gonna be like massive, massive, big damage moves. All of them lethal at this point. And again, we've still committed nothing. Correct. We've committed nothing, and essentially neither of these cards count towards progressive difficulty. The one with natures are going to be popping off. Double one with nature is is just insane. It's very very. Yeah, good. these one with natures are really really glued to Robert's hand. Um, very 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 powerful uh, aspects there. Um, and then now like plus four to your damage. block modifier, minus one to your check. I mean, this is over, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is, this is simply means this is a nine speed move. If we want to just make all of our math super easy. Checks a two. Yeah. There it is. Checks Their handshake two. comes in. Cannot reach the nine. And that is it. Robert cleaning up that second game uh, very, very, very quickly. Um, I mean, yeah, that was, uh, that was. I feel like this is probably going to become one of the hottest phrases of the weekend. But guys, that was Tokoyami doing Tokoyami things. Uh, that, and that is that deck's game plan. As well as Bakugo doing Bakugo things. Check in ones, you know? Check in ones.